Hi there. I'm Rob, the writer and producer of the High Desert Podcast and strategic outreach coordinator at the Santa Fe Animal Shelter. Hey, can I ask you a favor? Share this with everyone you know. Unlike most podcasts, this one supports so much more than just the program itself. We want to use it as a way of increasing awareness and raise funds for our organization, a 501c3 nonprofit and the only animal shelter in Santa Fe. We do not receive public funding and rely on help from donors to save the nearly 20,000 animals that we serve every year. Please consider donating, or short of that, telling people about this project. With enough listeners, we can get the High Desert Podcast sponsored. That way you can save lives just by listening. If you have questions or an idea for a story, please do not hesitate to contact us directly at podcast at sfhumanesociety.org. That's P-A-W-E-D-C-A-S-T at sfhumanesociety.org. Enjoy the show. On Mondays, Nancy can be found in the dog adoption kennels at the Santa Fe Animal Shelter. The kennels are top of the line by the standards of most shelters. Warm colored tiles coat the walls, natural light streams in through multiple large glass windows. Families and volunteers roam slowly through two long hallways bouncing from one kennel to the other, lifting latches to swing kennel doors open and greet the tail wagging residents. Nancy sits on the well-trodden, painted concrete floor between a small tiled ledge and a metal drain. She is unaware of the soft colors that surround or the sunlight coming in through the windows until it hits her skin. Her weathered cane leans against the ledge as she pets Pancho, a graying chihuahua missing a chunk of his jaw, the results of years of extreme neglect. Nancy moved to Santa Fe in 1972, a time when this small, high desert town was constantly receiving new imports of artists, gurus, and chefs. She was a photographer, and in an environment obsessed with depicting landscapes and spirituality, she focused on a subject matter most familiar to all of us, the faces around her. Some of her best portraits are of northern New Mexico's diverse indigenous populations. Nancy explains in her own words. I started photographing after I came here in 72. When I got here in the different cultures, all I wanted to do was to document those. That's what became my passion. And it was people that interested me, Not, not the houses or the landscape so much, but the people. The shots are candid depictions of contemporary life in the region's often marginalized Native American reservations. Nancy describes a life-changing moment that transpired on her way back from one of these communities. We were driving home from the Hickory Reservation. Luckily, I wasn't driving. Um, and just all of a sudden, what I was gone. No pain, nothing like that. Just it was gone. And the other one was only partially there. The doctor said it was a bilateral central vein occlusion, is what he called it. Nancy was suddenly blind, not because of an injury or slowly developing cataracts, but from a rare and sudden condition that disrupted blood flow to her eyes. Obviously, Nancy's sudden change of condition affected her day-to-day life as it would anyone. But it also meant giving up her profession. It even changed her retirement plans. I planned to volunteer at the Wheelwright Museum. Um, But I couldn't do that because I couldn't see. The Wheelwright Museum is dedicated to preserving indigenous art and culture. So I finally thought of the shelter. And I thought, that's something I could do, is go sit with these dogs. I sit with the dogs in their little kennels, and I try to give them the love they need. There's so much human to them. Whether she realizes it or not, Nancy hits on something we all experience as animal lovers, shelter workers, and rescuers. We so often paint this work as selfless and thankless, when in reality we get back so much more than what we put in. There's so much human to them. They're so similar to people in ways. If they feel they're loved, they're a lot more secure and can give love more. Isn't that true of all of us? Nancy never let the loss of her sight rob her from making an impact. And the service she provides to us is so important. 
Here's our volunteer coordinator, Devin White, to explain more. Volunteers are very important for everything that we do here at the shelter, uh, from socializing to helping on the beach. As a side note here, the beach is the area in the hospital where we help animals out of anesthesia. We would not be able to do a lot of our programs, opportunities, and just everything that we do here at the shelter stems from the original as to when we started back in 1939, individuals taking animals from the community into their homes and reaching out to the community to try to get them adopted. So we've come a long way since then, uh, over now 77 years, and literally without them we wouldn't be able to do all the things that we are now able to do. A dog that was blind, it wanted to be with me. It was a good, you know, we connected. And I started crying, and I couldn't stop crying. And I just, I couldn't stop crying. I think I was crying for me as much as the dog. The two of us were in a, a similar place. And I was thinking about what it was like for, for the dog. And I guess that triggered what it was like for me. And I just started crying. She's right. These animals possess something that makes them so similar to us. They are social. They are incomplete when they are unable to relate to others. So many of our dogs here are missing something. Some, like Nancy, have lost the ability to see. Some are deaf or paraplegic. Some have no physical disabilities whatsoever, but have deep emotional scars resulting from lifetimes of abuse. Those are the saddest cases of all. But socializing these dogs in their kennels is the great equalizer. To Nancy, the loss of one of her senses means nothing in this environment. I don't, I've learned I don't need to see here. Touching, feeling is, is what I'm hearing, of course, is, is all I need with these dogs. After a couple of hours with the dogs, Nancy leaves. She walks through the double door of the adoption center out into a landscape she cannot see. With her help, the dog she spends time with will also go through those doors someday to help someone else feel loved. It's tough work for a dog to be put back out in a world that rejected them once before. But Nancy's same revelation about her canine friends applies to humans as well. If they feel they're loved, they're a lot more secure. Thank you so much, podcast patrons. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the High Desert Podcast. If you have any questions, please submit them to podcast at sfhumanesociety.org. That's spelled P-A-W-E-D-C-A-S-T at sfhumanesociety.org. And remember to donate on our website, sfhumanesociety.org, or on our Patreon page. Only you can help us keep these animals and this show alive.